At the beginning of the movie, we're shown a clip of a woman lying unconscious somewhere on the concrete floor. She has a bloodied finger, and her shoes are red and dried blood. Still, she seems to be fairly uninjured considering her situation. Simultaneously, we're shown the clips of high waves crashing to the shore. The crash makes a terrifying roaring noise that echoes through the place the woman is in. The noise rings in her ears and eventually wakes her up from her unconscious state. At first sight, she sees nothing but concrete. Confused, she moves for the first time and finds herself in the most horrible position she could possibly be in. The woman is on the edge of a curved structure at a great height. Below the structure is a dark end of nothingness. Death is ensured if she makes one wrong move and falls off the edge. In addition to that, the position she's in doesn't help her cause. Her left leg is folded under her body with no way to bring it out. When the woman first sees the edge, she freaks out as expected. She tries to retreat, however, the movement does nothing but slide her further below. Fortunately for her, she doesn't fall off just yet, but it is pretty obvious that it's only a matter of time. The slide makes her left leg move upwards, hurting her greatly. In addition, her palms are scraped because of the rough and hard concrete. Her breath rises as she silently prays for her life, even though the chances of her survival are nil. Following that, we see a full view of the structure she's stuck in, and it seems to be a hydropower plant. Even if she manages to get far from the edge, the upright wall behind her won't allow her to escape. But the wall is the least of her concerns at the moment. As she curses the situation she's in, a loud horn blows from the void below. The noise startles her and makes the fall even more dreadful. She thinks for a moment and rationalizes that the noise must be because of the wind. The information relieves her a bit until a louder roar is heard seconds later. The woman looks at the sky in frustration and lets out a scream. A few minutes later, everything goes dead silent. The only thing she hears is her rapid breathing and the thoughts in her head telling her to survive one way or the other. She knows that staying still will eventually kill her. She also understands that moving might kill her instantly. Still, she's willing to take the risk. After a few long breaths to calm herself down, she places her hands and right legs sturdily in the concrete and tries to turn herself around. The plan backfires when she slides further down and is now on the absolute edge of the curve. She holds herself down trying to remain calm. A few seconds in, she finally understands that she has to give up on trying to straighten her leg. The only way for her to get away from the edge is to pull herself up in the exact position she's in. But the slide has made her ten times weaker. Her palms are now bleeding profusely after being scraped. She holds her right hand up and separates two fingers stuck together with blood. Following that, she dries off the blood in her jacket so her palm wouldn't slide when she attempts to go up again. Even the process of drying is horribly painful, but she endures it bravely. After that, she blows on the wounds, longing for a little bit of relief. Her blows are weak because she's fearful of making the wrong movements that will push her down to her death. After contemplating the next move for a considerable amount of time, she finally puts her uninjured leg up. Her bloodied palms push the concrete curve down as she rises her body in a painful arc of motion. Fortunately for her, the plan works this time and she makes some centimeters worth of progress. The woman sighs in relief and continues taking longer breaths to calm herself. Her palms are now almost numb because of the pain. Still, she puts them up one at a time and blows on them. She doesn't think much before making a similar move again and rises further up. Eventually, the woman starts to hallucinate. She sees the blood prints on the curve below, but her body seems to be missing in her vision. She looks at her palm and back to the blood print and starts to hyperventilate. She is now the furthest away from the edge and behind her is an upright wall. It's evident that she cannot climb up in any condition. But in the moment of panic, she doesn't rationalize her next move and tries to climb yet again. She is soon met with the consequences of her hastiness when she slides down a little. The panic makes her hallucinate more severely. She looks below and sees the prints of blood grow longer. She again tries to hold herself up but stops when she hears a loud noise. On looking back at the prints, she notices that two more of them have been added. Now, her only options are to either wait for inevitable death or make a move and fall to her death quicker. 
In her head, something tells her that if she continues with what she was doing, she will surely survive. The wrongful motivation proves that her brain is failing to grab the severity of the situation. After all, in the circumstance that she's in, she's not expected to think clearly. The only problem is that her will to survive might make her fall to her doom earlier than she expected. When everyone else in her place would have given up by now, she bravely puts her palm up and blows on it, getting ready to push herself up yet another time. In only a second, she slides back down a few centimeters or so. The woman is in no position to lose the progress she has made with much motivation. Her panic starts to grow alongside her hallucination. She looks back down at the prince for the third time, only to notice that they've grown extensively. Suddenly, a screech echoes in the background. The woman compares the noise to her death, calling her from the darkness below the edge. By now, her palms are destroyed, and she hardly has any skin left to be scraped. The sky roars at her agony and mocks her, but the woman doesn't seem to care. Soon, it starts to rain heavily, adding to her problems. She's unsure if the odds are working against her or helping her. The rain might end her pain by killing her sooner, or it might hurt her more by destroying her hope of survival. Either way, for the first few seconds, she enjoys the droplets hitting her face. Even if it is for a short moment, she feels at peace, almost as if the curve is her home and she has been living there since the beginning of time. But her satisfaction doesn't last long when the water lubricates the surface and slides her down. The woman closes her eyes and clenches her teeth, still filled with the fire of survival. She lets out a loud scream, but it doesn't compare to the thundering of the clouds. Then, she remembers she's wearing a chain necklace that might help her hold the curve for longer. She forcefully grabs it around her wrist and pulls it off her neck. We see her hand slide down slowly, even with the chain on. It is unclear if she survived the incident, but by the situation she was in, the conclusion can be imagined. Unlike most horror films that rely on jump scares, this movie creates a terrifying atmosphere and makes you feel the horror and fear inside you with the character. The fans believe that the movie is great in every sense because it triggers the viewer's primal human instincts. It is something from nightmares that makes people aware of the fear that they didn't know they had.